So this week we've been talking about the lower limb again with another group of students. Always seems to come around to the lower limb. And I'm not fascinated by the lower limb or anything, it's just one of those things we've been talking about quite a lot. And I realised something that we hadn't talked about, you and I, was the lumbosacral plexus. At least I don't think we have. Um, we've talked about the nerves of the lower limb. Um, and the lumbosacral plexus is where they come from. Now the lumbosacral plexus I saw on this model here, this is a great model, this is another model by Adam Rooley. And it, there's a huge amount of stuff on here. Um, loads and loads and loads that we could talk about. It's um, essentially a model of a deep prosection of the posterior neck, abdominal wall, pelvic wall, sorry, thoracic, abdominal, pelvic wall, that sort of thing, right? But what we can see here is we can see the spinal cord, we can see the sympathetic trunk, we can see the spinal nerves coming out, we can see the ribs, and we can see the parts of the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus, and we can see the nerves coming from it. So we can talk about the nerves as they come from the lumbosacral plexus, and then on other models we can see where they go, but I think we've talked about this whole thing. Anyway, so, so the thing about the lumbosacral plexus is, or the things that are, why is it different? Why is it interesting? You know about the brachial plexus, right? So the brachial plexus forms from the roots of uh, spinal nerves in the neck and we get cords and trunks and blah, blah, blah. So, so the brachial plexus describes how the spinal nerves that come out of the neck form the major nerves of the upper limb, of the shoulder and the arm and that sort of thing, right? Um, and the brachial plexus, is prone to injury because this is a highly mobile joint. The brachial plexus is wrapped around the axilla, uh, wrapped around the axillary artery as it goes to the axilla. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's fairly well protected, but things like landing from a height onto your shoulder and your neck, uh, shoulder and your head, pushing your shoulder and your head apart, can stretch parts of the brachial plexus and cause um, well described defects. Right. Um, also, you know, falling, people catch themselves from, from trees can damage the brachial plexus. Um, awkward births where the arm maybe um, leaves first, the arm of the baby leaves first and is pulled and the head is and so on, that can damage the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus is somewhat susceptible to injury. The nerves of our upper limbs are very important. We have huge dexterity. Um, so the brachial plexus is kind of complicated, one of those things you sit down and you learn and you understand as best as you can, hopefully inside out. Now the lumbosacral plexus is actually two plexuses. Plexuses is the correct plural, as I understand. Um, so we have a lumbar plexus associated with the lumbar spinal nerves and we have a sacral plexus associated with the sacral spinal nerves. Um, but there's one nerve in particular that causes us a little problem in separating these two out and that's the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve of course is the huge nerve that disappears down the posterior um, thigh and innervates the posterior compartment of the thigh and everything distal to the knee. And it has roots from what? L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. So obviously the roots of the sciatic nerve are coming from both the lumbar plexus and the, and the sacral plexus. So the two plexuses are joined and there's, um, there's a nervous structure which we'll look at in a bit called the lumbosacral trunk linking the two and carrying nerve fibres down to form the sciatic nerve. So we tend to consider the lumbosacral plexus as much as we consider a lumbar plexus or a sacral plexus. And because it's so deep in the posterior uh, abdomen and the posterior pelvis, it's not invulnerable to injury, but it's, it's not as exposed as the brachial plexus. I certainly say to the students that study here, there's no need to study the, brach the, the lumbosacral plexus in the same complexity as you understand the brachial plexus. Um, have a look at it, understand the roots and the nerves that form from it, because when you're examining patients with maybe uh, difficulties with gait, with gait deformities, um, with weakness and with uh, loss of sensation, if you know the nerves that supply the areas that they have weakness or numbness in, and you know your lumbosacral plexus and your roots, you can, you can work out at what spinal level 
the pathology might be. So this is all useful information, it's all important knowledge, but you don't need to learn the lumbar sacral plexus as such. Um, but this model shows us the roots of lots of interesting nerves. Should we have a look? All right, so where are we? Um, so look, here are the ribs. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So there's the last rib, which means that this must be the spinal nerve root of at the T12 level. And then L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And then this one, S2, S3, S4, S5 is down there somewhere. Yeah? So if this is the last rib, the 12th rib, then this nerve here must be the subcostal nerve. And it's running around um, inferior to the rib. Now here then, here's the L1 spinal nerve root. And we see two nerves, see this little V here? We see two nerves coming from here. So we've got the ilioinguinal and the iliohypogastric nerves. Ilio, ilium, so kind of in the, in the groin area, tells you where they're gonna go. Um, and these are, um, these are carrying sensory information from, I think iliohypogastric, right? So hypogastric, gaster means stomach, but think of gaster as a belly. So your nice middle-aged spread, you've got a good belly. Hypo means below. So hypo belly, so underneath the belly, that's where kind of the hypogastric nerve is. So the iliohypogastric nerve is, is carrying sensation from. The ilioinguinal nerve is going down to the, um, ugh, the iliac crest here, and it's gonna run around kind of anteriorly and laterally. So they, they're running in between the three layers of muscle forming the anterior abdominal wall and the lateral abdominal wall and the, the sensory round here. So ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves. And look, they're described as having, as coming from the spinal nerve root of L1. You see this little linker here? Maybe there's a little bit of involvement of T12 in there as well, contributing some neurons to those nerves. Uh, all right, if we go down, you see this little sneaky guy here? And uh, this side is clearer. All right. Uh, so this, is, this has got roots from L1 and L2. You see the roots on this side, emitted on that side. And this is the genitofemoral nerve. And as it descends, it gives off two branches. One goes towards the genito, and one goes towards the femoral. <laughs> Femoral is thigh, right? So this is running down towards the thigh. So towards the femoral triangle, and the genito part is running down to kind of the, what would be the anterior scrotum, uh, base of the penis in, in the male pelvis, and the anterior labia majora in the female pelvis, and they're carrying sensory information back from that region. So that's the genitofemoral nerve. Um, and we've got, oh, this guy coming out here. Uh, uh, oh. So this has got roots in what, L2 and L3. See this coming together and running around here? So here's the iliac crest. This muscle here is iliacus. Here is quadratus lumborum, his psoas here. Um, so we don't see it on this side because we've got psoas major. Oh look, psoas minor's there. Cool. Um, oh, this thing's heavy. Um, so this nerve is then between those two muscles. And this is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, or the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. And this is actually gonna run around to the, the lateral part of the upper thigh, and also the anterior part. And this is a sensory nerve from that region. So that's coming from, look, from L2 and L3 spinal nerve roots here. Now look at this guy. Oh, incidentally, talking about psoas and quadratus lumborum and iliacus and what have you, because the nerves of the uh, lumbar plexus are running over these muscles, then the innervation is rather boring. The innervation is small nerves that run directly to those muscles from the lumbar plexus. It's great if, because you don't have to learn it. Uh, it's, it's all in there. You know, these aren't really nerves you can detect out or see very easily. They just, they don't have to run very far. They're quite small. Um, now this guy here, this is a big, this is a big nerve here, right? So there's a big important nerve. We just see it popping out around here. Any guesses what this is? It's the femoral nerve. Yeah, very good. So this is coming from L2, L3, and L4 spinal nerve root levels, right?
and the femoral nerve is going to run to the anterior compartment of the thigh. This is the nerve that's going to innervate the quadriceps muscle group, it's going to innervate sartorius and all those guys in there, and it's going to run deep to the inguinal ligament to get into the thigh. So that's that guy there, that's the femoral nerve. As we continue around, we've got this other small nerve here, can you see this one? So this small nerve here, all right, this is also coming from L2, L3 and L4, and you can see all this on the model. Now look, where's this going? This is coming, as you see on this side as well, it's coming down into the pelvis, and this is going to run around the brim of the pelvis, or run around the rim of the bowl of the pelvis. This then is the obturator nerve. And the obturator nerve is going to pass out through the pelvis, through the obturator foramen, which we saw recently. Um, and this is going to pass into the medial thigh. So the obturator nerve is going to innervate the, um, the adductor muscles of the, of the hip, which are going to adduct the hip, uh, those adductor muscles of the thigh. These nerves are also sending off cutaneous branches to these regions as well, of course. So there's the obturator nerve. Let's keep going down. What can we see? Right, well now, now we're, we're getting down into the, the sacral plexus down here. And down here, the muscles under here, we've got piriformis. So piriformis, that, uh, that muscle there that runs out through the greater sciatic foramen um, and is involved in hip rotation. Remember we talked about those? So the, the sacral plexus largely lies upon piriformis and the muscles forming the wall of the pelvis. And really, Again, all of these little muscles here that we looked at that rotate ugh, the femur and the hip and what have you, they've also got lots of little nerves running from the sacral plexus to those muscles. They're very interesting names like nerve to obturator internus and that sort of thing. Um, if you look in the textbook, you see a big table full of nerves, innovating, big long list of muscles. And really, you know, there's not actually that much to see when you get in here. So I wouldn't worry about those guys. Um, but it's this big nerve here that we, we really love, right? Here's the, uh, here's the sciatic nerve. Now, the, oh, God, where is it? All right, so you can see, oh, you can see the sciatic nerve here is taking lots of roots from the sacral plexus. And here's the link with the lumbar plexus up here. So here's the lumbosacral trunk, all right? Um, and the sacral, Right, round two, here we go, almost done. Um, so there's the sciatic nerve, there's the lumbosacral trunk there. And the sciatic nerve then is also going to run out through the greater sciatic foramen. Can you see, look, there's another nerve down here as well. In fact, you can see there's the ischial spine, there's the coccyx and the, um, the sacrum. So this is the sacrospinous ligament here forming the greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic foramen. Go and have a look at that hip video if you haven't seen all that yet. But if the sciatic nerve goes out through the greater sciatic foramen, this must be the pudendal nerve, which is also going out through the greater sciatic foramen. And, it, and what, it's, what it's doing is it's getting out of the pelvis and then it comes back around through the lesser sciatic foramen to get under the levator ani muscle group, which it innervates a little bit, but it, it then runs underneath to get into those perineal pouches and those perineal spaces to do its main job, which is um, as sensory innervation from the external genitalium from the perineum and so on. So here's the pedendal nerve, it's, it's spinal nerve roots are S2, S3 and S4, so that's coming from the sacral plexus. So what do you reckon? That's just a little bit of this model. But that's the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus lumped together as the lumbosacral plexus. And like I say, when you're studying this, study those major nerves. I mean, the, the major nerves of the lower limb, femoral nerve, obturator nerve, sciatic nerve, all right? Bung on then the pudendal nerve, because it's really important. Um, the femoral cutaneous nerves, if you can, and the ilioinguinal and um, ili uh, iliohypogastric nerves are also good to talk about. And then the, um, the genitofemoral nerves. Well, to be aware that those guys exist and come from the lumbar plexus and how they run around and, and how they carry sensory information from uh, the inferior parts of the abdominal wall and, and the anterior, like the pubic region and that sort of thing. It's really helpful, right? So 
But there you go, the lumbosacral plexus. Oh. Ah. That was a good workout. Whew. Look at my heart rate is.